Um, first of all, Cam, um, Coach told us the last, I guess, after the last game that, you know, he had kind of, you didn't play the second game, um, and maybe that kind of lit a torch on the Euro. Can you rec can you give us um, an explanation of what happened in that game and then what kind of transpired to where it's kind of made you uh, step up your game? Some of the second game of the season? Yeah. Oh, um, well, yeah. Um, that was like the first game, I think, in my like, career that I haven't really played. So, like, it was kind of like an uh, adjustment for me, like, the sitting there, like, the whole entire game. But I took it as, you know, like a learning lesson. And as me, like, I'm a, I feel like I'm a real positive person. I didn't pout about anything or nothing. Like, I still was on the bench clapping every time my team scored and was still being a good teammate. But, I mean, I feel like it was just some adversity in my life. Um, I mean, everything isn't going to be what you wanted to be your whole entire life. So I felt like since then, I just always, I just took, uh, excuse me, I just kept my head down and just kept working and just trying to get better every day, trying to be a better teammate, trying to be a better player. And I just feel like after a while, you know, it just opened up an opportunity for me and I took advantage of it. So you totally understood then there was no not, no problems at all? And I mean, no, I mean, I mean, I didn't play, I mean. I wasn't going to, like, you know, pout about her or nothing. I just kept doing what I kept doing, kept being a good teammate, kept, you know, doing what I needed to do in practice and off the court and stuff. And eventually when my opportunity came, I, I felt like I seized it. Yes, for Derek, I mean, you've been through the SEC before. How do you explain the difference between the SEC, playing the SEC and, say, non-conference? What's the, di the b big difference, as you know, when you get an SEC play? Um, I would say a big difference would be, of course, talent-wise. But, I mean, as far as effort, I, b I believe the teams we played this year in the non-conference, they played pretty hard. Uh, the only difference with SEC, I believe, just I believe it's just more size, more talent-wise. But non-conference games probably would be more – they kind of play hard. So, there's really no difference, just talent. Do y'all feel like y'all have a lot of depth? It seems like every game it's somebody new coming up and being a leading scorer, being a leading rebounder. How do you feel about y'all's depth? We, I, we have a we have a lot of depth. Um, like you said, some people step up different times. It's the same thing at practice. Uh, the guys that y'all don't see on the court a lot, they contributing at practice. They doing good. Yeah, a lot of it is like. You might see it like out there on the court, but we see it every day in practice. Somebody new every day, you know, dominating practice and stuff. So whenever somebody get the opportunity in a game and they really just seize it, that's how I feel like our whole entire team is. You never know who's going to be on. It might be me, it might be Derek, it might be Juice, it might be, you know, you just never know. But we see every we see it every day in practice. So when it's on the court, we, we are just used to it. Derek, you and I guess Justice are the only guys maybe on this team that have played a full 18-game SEC schedule. Have you talked to the guys, the, the other guys that have an experience about what they're getting ready to get into? Yeah, I always tell them, um, don't let the moment like be too big. Like, it's nothing to just overthink about. You just go out there and do what you're supposed to do. Play hard, play with confidence. It'll be fine. Cam, what's going to be the, the challenge uh, matching up against Arkansas's backcourt? Um, I feel like, you know, uh, they got a lot of size. Uh, Ricky, it's kind of crazy. Me and Ricky play on the same AAU team together. So, like, I'm familiar with Ricky game, and we both from North Carolina. So, Ricky's a really good uh, player. He's about six, 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 seven, real athletic. And then they have another talented freshman, uh, Anthony Black, who's also another, like, six, seven, six, eight point guard. So, I feel like – Guard wise, it's gonna be a real good matchup. Um, I feel like we we match up really well with them, but I feel like whoever wins that matchup, you know, is gonna have like a key part in us winning the game. So I'm ready to see it. You know, it's gonna be our first uh, SEC game of the year. You know, we got a whole new team, whole new coaching staff. So we want to make a statement tomorrow, and we're just looking forward to the opportunity. Um, either one of y'all can take this. Um how how have y'all uh, prepared differently for Arkansas, and uh, what what has McMahon been telling y'all heading into the, the tough game? Um, 
I mean, honestly, all year, every day since summer, we all uh, play. We practice hard every day. So that's that's his biggest thing. Like practice hard, play hard. That's just his way. So we're really not doing anything too different. But I believe the biggest thing we preach now is focus. Just being focused. Like those times you see in the game when we going up, we take the lead, then we make careless mistakes while we up. I feel like he's just trying to get everybody to be down there and be focused more. But as far as everything else, he just – we play hard every day. So, there's really no difference in that. Just for both players, you're like you're like four and one in games that are decided by four points or less. Uh, is it because maybe – I mean, I know you all figured together for the first time, but you have a lot of veterans on this team. Is there like, is it pretty no, – no panic type situation when you get in these tight games? I mean, yeah. I feel like we have a lot of college experience, you know, on our team. And, you know, in those situations, I feel like when you're young, you kind of get to, like, point fingers and blame and start panicking. But, you know, we're an older group, so we know how to, like, win games. We know how to come together as a team and know when we got to, like, step it up and win a game. And the coaches also emphasize that, like, when uh we were in um, Atlanta, when we was playing Wake Forest, we went into halftime and stuff, and Coach Mack was like, you know, we cut the lead down. Like, we're going to win this game today. Right. So, you know, it just, it just lit a fire in us, like, coming out of halftime to be able to win that game. And then I just feel like we haven't panicked since then. We might make a couple, you know, careless turnovers or might have some uh, situations where we'll, uh, you know, lose our lead. But we don't all, we don't lose focus at all. We just make sure we got to do what we have to do to win a game. And we've been doing that. Mm-hmm. Oh, no, he got it. <laughs> <laughs> Cam, what do you try to bring each game? Is it your playmaking ability? Is it your energy? Is it a spark? What do you try to bring each game? Um, I just try and be kind of like a leader on the court. You know, make sure that you know I lead by example. You know, mm-hmm. and I'm gonna say I bring a spark. I feel like the spark, like for us, would be Fallon. Like I love playing with Fallon. He just brings all the energy and stuff. So when you look back and you see him yelling, you see him bringing all the energy on the defense, and it makes everybody else wanna. Uh, play harder and stuff but for me I just want to be a leader do whatever I got to do whether it's scoring you know playmaking playing defense whatever I got to do to help the team win I'm going to do it how has starting the past three and four games for each of you respectively kind of shifted your ability to feel comfortable on the court and make plays and kind of you said everybody's a leader but individually how has that helped each of you kind of become that leader oh you said that's the first part about since, since we started oh how do it make us like? How do how we been feeling? I mean, when I got the starting car, I mean, I just told myself whatever I was doing at first to get the starting car, I was just gonna keep doing it even more in the starting lineup. And I've been comfortable. It's been cool. Uh, like he said, I just gonna play hard. So that's all I really know to do: play hard, do whatever coach need me to do. For real, for real. Yeah. Um, since being able to start, it felt like. Just kept doing whatever I was doing that got me to this position that I'm in. Um, I felt like it kind of started me like on the defensive end, just being able you know pick up and cause havoc on the defensive end and offensively wise, everybody on the team can score and stuff. But I felt like defensively that helped me, and then it just made me feel more comfortable, you know, being able to do everything else. Yes, this is for Derek. How many plays do you think, points do you think you get off of hustle per game? You seem like you just, you're in constant motion, and that's probably in your head, like, I just need to keep moving and keep moving and keep moving and keep moving. And if I do that, good things are going to happen. Right. And you ask how many points? Yeah, I mean, I mean, does, does that part of your of your game in your head, I, I, I can't stand still. I need to keep moving mm-hmm. no matter what. I'm going to score whether it's they give me the ball or I get offensive rebounds. Yeah, I think most of I think it's like, 80% of my points probably come from hustle points, really. I'm not – uh, I haven't made too many plays this year, uh, you know, off the dribble, my own thing type stuff. So, yeah, I would say most of the points, most of my points come from hustle. All right, all right. No doubt.